Coffee Time. Welcome to this week's video. I've come out to a moor that I've never been to uh, before and it's about, it's about 35, 40 minute drive for me so it's not too bad. Uh, I got here this morning. Um, the idea is to try and get some more short-eared hours again from a different venue. Uh, got here just after dawn and there were a couple here, two distinctly different coloured birds that were just way off into the distance just managed to catch just a little bit of footage but nothing special uh, also scenes uh, a kestrel um, which I think I've managed to get a, a reasonable a bit of footage the last couple of weeks it's been um, poor, pretty poor light but this was just, I think the light was just slightly better um, it looks as if the light's going to improve uh, for this afternoon into the evening so fingers crossed hopefully they come out uh, and hopefully I get a reasonable um, some reasonable shots uh, the wind is pretty blustery at the moment so hopefully that won't put them off it looks as if it's going to uh, calm down just before we get to or just as we get to, to dusk so yeah let's fingers crossed and see what comes <laughs> Although this venue differs from Farlington in its reeds, the moor is still a favourite for the predators like the kestrel and the harrier. This marsh harrier worked its way up through the middle, taking advantage of the strong winds, constantly looking for its prey. drifted off to my right, unsuccessful in its attempts to find any prey. As dusk approached, the owls started to lift off from the moor. This autumn, our resident birds appear to have been swollen in numbers by the nomadic Scandinavian migrants, making it a real spectacle. It was difficult to count the exact number of owls as they were spread all over the large area, but I estimate them were probably at least seven, two or three, right off into the distance to my right. There was even several flying behind me. These birds are a firm favourite of Denise's daughter, Rebecca, and you can definitely see why they're such a graceful bird. Unlike Farlington, there seems to be plenty of prey here, and they were constantly dived in search of a meal. Unfortunately, I did not manage to get that hero shot of them lifting off with a vole. And I got a funny feeling I'm going to make a, a few more attempts to come down to see if I can grab that elusive shot. Thank you. 
in respect to the filming, I've made some changes to some of the focusing settings, and I'm just quite pleased uh, this time around. It didn't seem to, the camera didn't seem to hunt so much and lose focus so much when they're in flight. Fair enough, when they go behind bushes, uh, you're going to be losing focus, but it regained them pretty quickly, which, which I was quite pleased with. I think uh, if I was to make a change for the next time I come, I was uncertain how close they were going to get, but they got really quite close. There was no need for me to shoot in 4K, which I can only slow down uh, sort of half speed. I think next time I'll choose to shoot in HD, which I can then slow down four times. Something which I had a little try at, uh, but not much great deal of success, was take some photographs. So I think maybe if if Denise comes down with me the next time, we can uh, take some. She can take some photographs, and I'll do the video. But I really do want to try and get some some nice stills because they're just so beautiful. As the sun dropped below the horizon, the birds started to melt away. It was a cue for me to leave. And as I was walking back to the car, I just saw one last owl on the tree. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a big thumbs up, like and subscribe. And as always, it'd be great for you to join me for a cup of coffee in the next one.